So originally this video was going to be a review of the Shadow of the Colossus remake for PS4, but I realized pretty much everyone knows this game is phenomenal. I mean, everyone who plays video games has heard of it, and anytime a top games of all time list is published, this game is pretty much guaranteed to be on it. So there's not much I can say that hasn't already been said about this game. But then I watched the LP of it being done by the Super Best Friends, and heard that not only was there talk of a movie adaptation, but someone had actually acquired the script for it. So I immediately paused the video, went looking for it, and sure enough found it. Originating from Dan Olson, as in he's the one who found it, of one of my favorite YouTube channels, Folding Ideas. So, despite all hope that this was a joke they were making, it is in fact not, and there is actually a script out there. So I just have to ask, why the fuck would anyone think Shadow of the Colossus is a good game to adapt into film? If anything, I can't think of a single worse game to adapt into a film. <sighs> okay, oh yeah. Also, and this video is going to be pretty spoiler heavy. I mean, this game is pretty much best played as blind as possible with as little information as you can have. It's best to get into this just fresh as possible. But yeah, spoilers are ahead. One of the main ways this game tells its story is through the mechanics and gameplay. Wander, our main character and protagonist, is a rather skilled horseman, archer, and is probably someone who is rather physically active with a great amount of upper body strength. We know this from the fact of the things he can do gameplay-wise. And while it won't be impossible to show this simply through the silver screen, it would diminish its effects greatly when one experiences it through the form of gameplay. As someone who has beaten this game and is currently watching a let's play of it, there is something that is lost in the translation from video game to just a full-on visual experience. The combination of deciding whether or not to go for quick, weaker attacks or to charge up for a attack of massive damage while the beast rears up and begins yet another attempt to shake you off coupled with the elation or frustration of just narrowly landing that attack or having your attack interrupted a millisecond before you can, you know, strike it, makes for this hideous sensation add into the fact that the slowly approaching panic of seeing your stamina slowly but noticeably, but noticeably draining away and every fight feels tense and challenging something that's absent when you're not in control. And then there's the end of the boss encounter. Every single Colossus just sort of has the life drain out of it and these tendrils of malice and smoke and shadow come through the air and spear through our protagonist, followed by Wanderer being changed every time. His physical capabilities increase, he gains more stamina, and I believe he also gains a bit of health. But even more subtly, his body deteriorates until it's nothing but a shambling corpse. While there is nothing preventing the first and last of those being shown, how will they showcase the Wanderer's increasing capabilities? Will they simply, you know, increase the amount of time he has to hold on for dear life when a Colossus is trying to shake him off? Like, will he turn to aggro and go, wow, I sure feel stronger mid, like, combat. Like, how are they going to showcase this in a way that go won't go completely contrary to the game and, if they go through with this, movie's tone? One of the reasons the story, in my opinion, is so effective is through complicity. Things seem off at the offset from the story. Dorman is described as a god who controls the dead, not something one traditionally attributes to benevolent beings. And he seems more amused than anything else when discussing the death of Mona, almost mocking in a way. Add in the shadow figures we first see just entering the temple and the tendrils of, you know, malice, shadow, and despair stabbing into Wanderer at the end of each Colossi encounter, 
along with the shadowy figures just crowding around him more and more each and every time when he is returned to the temple through unknown means, and there is blatantly something sinister afoot. Yet still, even as this happens, we continue on. Despite all blaring warnings that this cannot end well, we continue searching, continue engaging, and killing all of the colossi we come across. Despite the fact that as we come to see, these creatures are not monsters. Some predators or animals guarding their territory, yes, but some are almost majestic, with no real way to deliberately harm us. And yet still we hunt. At any time we can stop, at any time we can put down the controller and go no more. But still, like Wanderer, we have committed to this path and we will not stop till we see it to its conclusion. And it is because we are complicit in ending these creatures, in continuing on this story, that it is so effective. Because in a way, we have ended them with our own hands. We have decided that, you know, the price does not matter. We will continue this through. <sighs> Less is more. This is a well-known and oftentimes true saying. And Shadow of the Colossus showcases this beautifully. Few are the times we hear a character speak. Only Dorman truly converses on a regular basics. And that is to tell us where our next victim is, nothing more. The game can be boiled down into a single repeating loop. Dorman speaks, oftentimes giving us a hint towards defeating our next foe. We raise our sword to find the direction we must, we mount onto Argo, and we travel forward. We find our prey, we figure out the gimmick, and we slay them. Repeat ad nauseum till the end of the game. So then how exactly would a movie show this? Because without the gameplay, this is rather boring. This is rather monotonous. If you have played the game, or even if you haven't and you don't care about spoilers, go look for a walkthrough, something with no commentary, and see how long you can last just watching it. It's probably not gonna be long. So the fact remains, what is the plan? Well, according to this script Mr. Folding Ideas got his hands on, it's flashbacks. Are you sincerely shitting me? The minimalism of Shadow of the Colossus extends to the character's background and the backstory of the game as a whole. Aside from what we know of Wanderer's physical capabilities, very little else is known. We know Wanderer cares deeply enough of the woman, Mona, enough to venture into this so-called forbidden lands. But even so, we don't know what their relationship is. Perhaps it's lovers, perhaps it's brother and sister, even just close friends. Even the cause and reason for Mona's death is unknown. We know that she is a sacrifice, but for what? To repel some sort of evil? Because she herself was cursed and brought misfortune along everyone else? Perhaps it was simply to ensure a good harvest of food next, you know, farming season. We do not know, therefore we cannot be certain if it did not have good cause. And, at the end of the game, the figurative 11 hour, we are introduced to the shaman Iman, someone who states that he is here to stop us, who we see wants to stop the slaying of these colossi, because he, like by this point we ourselves are aware, something sinister is afoot. And he is well aware of the dangers of what could happen if these colossi are slayed. And, you know, at the end there's even a sort of hint at a shared past, he tells us that he was, he thought it would be us and that he has come to stop us and if we are aware of what are we, we are doing. The ambiguity of this is what gives this story a sort of intrigue that is so fascinating. 
we can say for the fact that Wander is the protagonist, and Iman is this sort of antagonist. But what we can't say conclusively is that we are the hero and Iman is the villain. Because as we can see at the end of it, Wanderer, either because he didn't know what slaying the Colossi would end up in, or if he was well aware and he just didn't care what the price he would pay for seeing Mona alive, slays these beings and releases this evil onto the world. And Iman, this shaman, seems to have the ability to seal the monster, so he seems to have been preparing for this. So, at the end, we can't really say who is the hero and who is the villain. In this case, I truly believe that less is more, and the more we would know about the past of this story, the more it would suffer, the less it would be overall. So, what does the script do exactly? Do they do something interesting? Do they try to subvert expectations, or do they try to show us the characters in such a way that that ambiguity stays? Nope. Not only does this script ruin the story by adding more when it would be detrimental, but it in fact actively destroys what little we know. Iman is outright a villain. He is a man in power. He looks down on Wanderer for being from a lower class. In this script, Wanderer is an escaped slave slash thief. And he basically just barely stops at literally spitting in his face. Aggro. They somehow managed to ruin the fucking horse. It is blatantly, you know, clear that Agro and Wanderer have been together for a long time. Agro, you know, responds to his commands instantly. He is always following Wanderer wherever he goes. He is this constant companion. But no, he is just this stereotypical, untamable horse, basically wild stam stallion, until he is stolen by Wanderer and allows him to ride him because according to the script he recognizes a fellow slave and sees him as a kindred spirit fucking what oh my f oh i'm getting so frustrated and then we have mona mona oh god they mona the entire crux of this story they fuck it up she is sacrificed for dude for dubious reasons, pitting Wanderer against his culture and possibly his main religion, to the point where he steals this sword of light, which is presumably an incredibly powerful, if not important, relic, and traveling to the Forbidden Lands, which, in case you didn't guess from the name, is forbidden for good reason. And this girl who is sacrificed, she is relegated to a sexy farm girl. That's basically all she is. She's just this attractive farm girl who ends up being killed by her father in a drunken fit. Also, by the way, her father is, he is said to speak an unknown tongue. So her father is basically a dirty foreigner and oh boy. I'm not even mad at this point. I've just gone fully numb. I'm just, it's more this deep well of disappointment. Because a Shadow of the Colossus movie was never, never going to live up to the game. Unless there was, unless they transformed it completely into something else, it was never going to live up to, game, to the game. A true adaptation was not going to work. But this... This is obviously made by people who only have tangential knowledge to the source material. These people butchered some of the most important and only aspects of the story, and it's just, it's infuriating. Shadow of the Colossus is a phenomenal game, and if you have a PlayStation 2 or above, you should go play it.
and hopefully this movie, which is quote unquote still being made, hopefully this abomination never sees the life of day. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, that's been me, Juan John John. If you like this video, like it. If you disliked it, there's a button for that too. Comment, subscribe, ring the bell. And also, by the way, the reason why there was no video, you know, yesterday or a couple of days ago is because the copyright fairy claim came and just fucking blocked the thing entirely. It was a video about Darling of the Franks, and no matter how much I, like, fuck with the footage, it's the copyright fairy still consistently fucks with it. So, yeah, that's basically going to be, you know, that's going to be put towards, you know... I don't know, like fucking, you know, unpublished hell or something. Or maybe I'll just remove any and all footage and just slap on the, like, promotional poster and release that as a mini podcast. Who the fuck knows? But yeah, that's why there was no video when it was supposed to go up. Alright, so... Fuck, I completely forgot, but yeah. Like the video, like it, dislike it if you did. Comment, subscribe, ring the bell, and if you would be so kind, check out my Patreon and please support me because... Honestly, fucking, I need to eat, and my fucking minimum wage fast food job is no longer doing it. But yeah, if you have the funds to, you know, support me on Patreon, please do that. Consider that. Alright, I have been Juan John John, and I shall see you later. Goodbye.